We're joined by Washington Congresswoman Kathy McMorris Rogers, who's also the ranking member on the House Energy and Commerce Committee, and Crystal Davis, founding president of Texas Rare Alliance, an advocacy group for Americans with rare diseases. Thank you so much for joining us today. Congresswoman, could you walk us through some of the initiatives that the Lower Costs, More Cures plan does for Americans? Absolutely, and I appreciate you highlighting this. What Speaker Pelosi is proposing in the House is really government price controls, and it is, it is a scheme that would actually result in fewer cures and life-saving treatments, and, and especially for people with disabilities, for with those with chronic illnesses, pre-existing conditions. I have a son with disabilities. I'm really frightened as to what this proposal would mean. It would be a damper on cures and treatments. You think about we're on the verge of cures for cancers or Alzheimer's. Uh, it's estimated that we would have 100 fewer drugs in the United States of America if this proposal actually goes through. So what, what the Republicans are proposing is to build upon the successes of the Trump administration, where we were, we were leading. Um, you think today, we, we may not even have had the vaccines for, for the coronavirus if it had not been the work that the Trump administration had done. And we want to build on that. We want to build on bipartisan proposals that would actually lower the cost for patients, continue to bring more generics and biosimilar uh, competition to the marketplace. That's what the Trump administration was working on. Uh, that's what we had passed in the House, what we passed in Congress last year, 16 proposals. We need to build on that. We need more price transparency to ensure that that patients and citizens of this country know what the public cost is of a drug. We also need to put a cap on seniors out of pocket cost and make a Medicare more like a insurance program so that we are protected from a catastrophic cost. Bottom line, there's bipartisan uh, proposals. That's what we're promoting that would actually ensure that America continues to lead in, in uh, amazing breakthroughs and cures that we're on the, the verge of discovering. Thank you, Congresswoman. I'll go to Crystal now. As a mother of a child with a rare disease, what concerns you about the language used in the Lower Drug Costs Now Act? Um, so, Pelosi's bill actually, uh, by imposing price constraints, seeks to stifle innovations. And I know what that means. When Hunter was diagnosed, Doctors told us there was no treatment, there was no cure, and they advised us that all we could do was really take Hunter home and enjoy what time we had left with him, which was about three months. So we know what it means to work toward a breakthrough treatment, and we had to do that on our own, and that's what we don't want other families to have to do. We want treatments to come out. We saw what could happen the possibility of mRNA vaccines. This is a breakthrough technology that had never been utilized before in a vaccine. And it had been deployed quickly and accessed by patients. And we want the same to be achieved for rare disease patients and cancer patients and Alzheimer's patients. All of these diseases with unmet needs. These patients need treatments. We can't allow policies to get in the way of these treatments. We need to continue the research. And the, the other thing, when we import these policies, when we import the prices from the other countries, they incorporate qualities in developing the prices. And the qualities are arbitrary and discriminatory in devaluing the lives of the chronically ill, disabled, and elderly, and discounting their lives to lower the cost of the treatments that they use. And our country has had a great history of respecting the lives of all individuals, and we cannot afford to discount the lives of anyone because they're medically fragile, disabled, or elderly. All lives matter, and we need to make sure that, that we stand up for all patients. Thank you. And Congresswoman, you are also, as you mentioned, the mother of a child with a disability. How does that experience guide you in crafting legislation like this one? Well, I, I can tell you as a mom, 
Uh, having a, a, a son with a disability it only makes me more passionate about the importance of American leadership in curing diseases and new treatments that are going to improve our quality of life. Unfortunately, Speaker Pelosi is, is following the lead of countries like Canada and the UK that assign a lower value to lives. Uh, and what that means is that you wait, uh, you can wait months for treatments and, and, and care is limited. So as you think about America being on the verge of cures and treatments for Alzheimer's, cancer or SMA, what Speaker Pelosi is proposing, it, it means that those cures, those, those amazing breakthroughs and treatments would not happen. It would be devastating at the very time that we're just on the verge of uh, amazing breakthroughs. It doesn't matter which patient group, disease group I meet with right now, they're excited about the research. We need to make sure that America is leading and not imposing government or socialist uh, price controls that would jeopardize the the uh, quality of life and the improved outcomes that we're, we're on the verge of discovering. And Congresswoman, this bill was initially proposed when President Trump was still in office and Republicans controlled the Senate. Why do you think that it still has a chance of passing now? Well, this is the approach that Speaker Pelosi and the Democrats are, are moving forward. And, it, and as I said, it's fashioned after uh, the approaches in Canada and UK where you have to wait a lot longer. Uh, the reason that the Trump administration and the Republicans opposed it last Congress was that this is, you know, we don't want to be a damper. We don't want to limit 100 breakthroughs. It's, it's, it's estimated that 100 breakthroughs would not happen. That's what the Congressional Budget Office estimated. And, and what we need to focus on are those very policies that are actually going to help bring down the cost, empower patients, and make sure that we lead in curing cancer and Alzheimer's and SMA. So that's where the Republicans are going to focus. We're going to we're continue to build. We did pass last Congress bipartisan provisions, 16 bipartisan provisions that would help bring down the cost. In fact, prescription drug costs had started coming down. That's what we need to build on, but not do it in a way that is going to limit cures and breakthroughs. Uh, this is important to um, so many lives, millions of Americans. We've led in 21st century cures. It's, a, it's, it's foundational to us leading and having a vaccine, several vaccines actually, to, to uh, help people protect them from COVID-19. That's the approach that we need to focus on, innovation and cures. Thanks so much, Congresswoman Kathy McMorris-Rogers, who's also the ranking member on the House Energy and Commerce Committee. And thank you, Crystal Davis, founding president of Texas Rare Alliance.